Hi friends, many of our viewers know that our main YouTube channel is Russian speaking and many videos are translated and uploaded to this channel. The author of the channel was born in the Soviet Union and highly appreciates some electronic devices made in the USSR. Videos about Soviet electronics are often published on the main channel. This video is an unbiased overview of the American measuring device, which was created when pointer multimeters were popular in the Soviet Union. First of all, I would like to point out that this video isn't an advertisement for Fluke. I haven't yet grown to this level so that the Fluke paid for my advertising, and the multimeter monitored in this video hasn't been produced for a long time. Fluke Corporation was founded last century in 1948 by John Fluke and specialized in the design and manufacture of measuring equipment. In the 50s, the Fluke company produced instruments for the largest laboratories. Thanks to the quality and advanced technologies, the company has won a name for itself. It was Fluke who showed the world one of the first digital multimeters. Today, Fluke is the most recognizable brand and is famous for its safe, protected, high-precision and high-quality devices, in particular portable multimeters. Of course, Fluke multimeters are by no means cheap. One of the most basic options, like the Fluke 101, will set you back around $50. A Chinese multimeter similar in functionality will cost 5 times cheaper. An average Fluke measuring device will all the conveniences such as Fluke 12, 15, 17, 18 will cost from $100 to $150. And high-precision complex instruments, for example the Fluke 289, depending on the configuration, can cost from $700 to $1,000 and more. But this isn't the most expensive portable Fluke multimeter. And multifunctional fluke calibrators can cost from 10 to 100 of thousands of dollars. Recently, on a world famous marketplace, I brought for myself a rather ancient but extremely interesting multimeter Fluke 27 FM multimeter from the 1980s. It is used, shabby, but fully functional, and today I will make a full review of this device. This multimeter, despite its age, has almost all the bells and whistles that are in modern multimeter. That is, it may well compete with modern, even expensive devices, but in accuracy and functionality. It's not outdated at all. What about the multimeter itself? Firstly, I will say that there are several versions of this multimeter and they almost didn't differ in appearance. My version is with the FM index in a black case. This is a true RMS multimeter which was created for military use. A regular Fluke 27 can't measure true RMS unlike mine. Also, the black version has increased accuracy. The DC voltage error is only 0.1%. Let me remind you that this is the 80s, but nevertheless, a multimeter with auto selection of measurement ranges. That is, you have chosen, for example, a voltage meter and measure any voltage. You don't need to select the sub range every time, as in the case of multimeter with manual selection. Manual selection is also available. The multimeter is heavy, bulky, but extremely strong with thick body walls and moisture protection. The device has an LCD display for 3200 counts, updates 2 times per second. There is a bar graph for 31 segments. The update rate is 25 times per second. Control buttons are located under the display. The first button is responsible for manual range selection and switching sub-ranges. Nearby is a button for relative measurements. It resets the readings on the display, for example, eliminates the resistance of the probes. The third button is Min Max Mode for measuring the minimum and maximum values. And the last button will hold the readings on the display. In the center is the mode switch. Below are the input terminals, the main measuring, ground and a pair of terminals for measuring low currents up to 320 mA and up to 10 amps. Do you want your homemade products to be the same as the factory ones? Then you need high-quality printed circuit boards, which PCBWay will produce for you at affordable prices. Just download the source Gerber files from the company's website, select the options you need, pay for the order, and soon your boards will be ready.
The complexity, number of layers, and board sizes can be anything. PCBWay often holds contests and sweepstakes. Follow the news to keep track of the events. We were personally convinced of the quality. Try it too. The link is in the description. The multimeter measures direct voltage up to 1000 volts. The basic error is only 0.1%. Alternating voltage also measures up to 1000 volts, but there the interesting thing begins. As I said, this multimeter is a true RMS class device, that is, it is capable of measuring the true RMS value. Such multimeters can adequately measure the true voltage value regardless of the waveform. It doesn't matter if it is a sinus, a triangle, or a square wave. All modern series multimeters are required to be true RMS, but most of these multimeters are true RMS only up to frequencies from several hundred hertz to 1 to 2 kilohertz. But in our fluke, true RMS function works at frequencies as high as 30 kilohertz. Even rather expensive multimeters cannot boast of this. From my collection can boast only two, the fluke, 289 which measure alternating voltage with a frequency of up to 1 kHz and insect bench multimeter, but they cost a lot of money. Of course, with increasing frequency the measurement error increases. If at low frequencies the tolerance is only half a percent, then at frequencies of 10 to 30 kHz tolerance is already 4% and 10 units of the least significant digit. The device has modes for measuring low voltages, millivolts, for both DC and AC voltage. The error is small. Resistance meter up to 32 mega ohm. Basic error is only 0.2%. We have a combined mode of checking and measuring the voltage drop across the diet. The test voltage on the probes is about 2 volts. This is enough to test all types of diodes and some LEDs, for example, red with a low light up voltage. But this isn't enough for blue and white LEDs. We will check everything at the end. The device measures direct current up to 10 amps. The basic error is 0.75%. Alternating current is the same, but the error is already 1.5%. The device is powered by 9 volt battery of 6F22 type. Waterproof up to 1 meter, can work properly in rather harsh conditions, is economical and damn strong. The disadvantage is the weight of 700 grams. Yes, you definitely can't call it pocket. It has a comfortable stand with one stable state, but in fact the multimeter stands securely on the table in several positions of this stand. Now let's go to measurements and checking accuracy. First, I will note that I didn't calibrate this multimeter in any way. It was used and I don't know what the previous owner did with it. We will compare its readings with the reference multimeter Fluke 289, whose accuracy in all ranges is much higher than that of the tested Fluke 27. DC voltage measurement 10 mV, 100 mV, 1 volt, 10 volt AC voltage To measure resistance I will use ultra high precision and ultra stable resistors 10 ohm 263.077 ohm 1 kilo ohm 10 kilo ohm 180 kilo ohm 10 kilo ohm Direct current 10 milliamps 100 milliamps 1 ampere Alternating current The checking is quite fast and you can work comfortably. I didn't notice any delay in triggering. Diet test 
short ghee diet, conventional diet, red lead, white lead is expected it is unable to check. Now let's check the true RMS function. I feed the sinusoid from the signal generator and gradually increase the frequency from 100 Hz to 30 kHz. We will compare with the readings of the Fluke 289. I also connected a current clamp which also has a true RMS function, although the option works at relatively low frequencies, about 1 to 2 kHz. Frequency 100 Hz Frequency 1 kHz Frequency 10 kHz 20 kHz 30 kHz Well, a bonus, the frequency is 50 kHz. No words are needed here, you sew everything. Disadvantages Of the standard meters, there is no capacitance meter and frequency meter. There is no backlight. The multimeter itself is bulky and taking this into account, they could have put a larger display. There is also no auto shutdown. Well, now we disassemble the multimeter for prevention and to study the feeling. Inside we find a printed circuit board with a protective screen. Pay attention to the input terminals. In cheap multimeter, they are a thin sheet of metal with one flimsy conductor soldered to the board. Here, these are thick sleeves that are screwed to the board. It is also worth noting that all self-tapping screws that fix the box halves have a rubber seal. In my opinion, the board is beautiful. There is free access to all components, maintainability is at high level. We see a vertical board with a pair of special class fuses. Such fuses are used in all multimeters from this company. These are quick break and safe fuses that cost a lot of money. One fuse is 15 amps, the other 1 amps. Apparently these are authentic fuses that were originally in this device. Both fuses are intact. On the board we see a current shunt. I saw such a solution in expensive looks. Here current measurements are made using a 4-wire circuit to increase the accuracy of the readings. There are two boards. On the small board there should be a display controller, but probably in my version it is on the back side. On the big board settled everything else. When I reviewed the Soviet multimeter electronic MMT-01, I said that it isn't good to paint the board of a portable multimeter with varnish, and instead, it is preferable to make the case of the device sealed. Many viewers immediately rushed into the comments to prove the opposite. Look here, there is no varnish on the Fluke 27 FM board. The case is sealed, there is a sealing rubber around the entire perimeter. You will say that this is an ancient device and for sure everything is different now. Here is an expensive modern fluke, also without varnish and the body is waterproof. The same can be seen in almost any modern multimeter. This isn't a welding inverter, in the case of which there are many slots. There, it is necessary to fill the board with varnish, as in many other devices. By the way, this board is from the Fluke 8020, which in my opinion became the prototype for our MMT-01, to remind you that there is also no varnish. I won't talk for a long time about the quality of the box and the plastic in general. It is thick, high-quality plastic. There are notes on the board about the release dates of a certain revision. With any layout, it is the 1980s. The entire feeling of the device is under the screen, but everything is easily disassembled. The motherboard looks like a Christmas tree, multicolored, old-school components, perfectly aligned, high-quality, shiny soldering. Switch contacts are silver-plated. Probably some of these contacts are platinum-plated, judging by the fact that they have not changed color over the years, but this is not certain. The counterpart of the switch may seem unreliable, but the exact same solution is used in expensive modern flukes. It runs like clockwork and the service life is very long. This sample is proof of this. The input circuits of the multimeter have serious protection, everything in the spirit of a fluke. 
In some places, you can see the milling of the board. This is necessary to provide an air gap in order to avoid spark breakdown. Highly stable and accurate resistors of 150 and even 20 ppm can be seen on the board. In the center, we see the microcircuit SC77174, which is a true RMS converter developed by the Fluke company. Quite a rare microcircuit, to find information about it isn't so easy. This cheap marked Fluke 70112 is the brain of our multimeter or its analog to digital converter. It is responsible for all measurements, signal decoding, auto range, etc. This ceramic rectangle is a precision resistor assembly that is used as voltage dividers. This component in a TO98 package labeled 285PX appears to be a LM285 micropower solid state voltage regulator for 1.23 volt 60 ppm. In fact, it's a highly stable zinger diode, which in this multimeter is used as a voltage standard, and the device compares the measured values with this standard. I bought this multimeter as my main workhorse because previously I sold most of my handheld multimeters, leaving only the best and most expensive. But these multimeters are pretty to use for everyday needs and I needed a cheap, protected, reliable and accurate instrument at an inexpensive price. After a long search, I decided that the multimeter Fluke 27FM would be the best option. It's bulky but cool, it has stood the test of time and even now it can compete with modern, even quite expensive multimeters. Build quality and reliability are much higher than most similar ones. I will not compare it with cheap Chinese multimeters. It is enough to hold one such a device in your hand, use it and it will become clear to you why many people prefer the Fluke. The most important thing is that no such used multimeter can be bought for $50 to $70. Believe me, it's difficult to find analogs with that cost. And yes, I will not hide it, I'm a great admirer of Fluke products. What can I say in conclusion? Of course, we lag behind in electronics and lag behind pretty well. I would not venture to say that there were no similar measuring instruments in the Soviet Union at that time, since I don't know much, but in any case, such instruments weren't available to ordinary mortals. Fluke was and remains one of the best manufacturers and the most recognizable brand in the field of measurement of technology. But we also made quite good equipment. Now, I'm not talking about consumer goods, but about the technique that was used in scientific laboratories which are in demand today, till now. Yes, the USSR copied a lot from Western countries. With this I cannot but agree, but now mainly prefer not to bother at all because it is still impossible to compete with China. It's a pity. Well, friends, in this video are coming to an end. If you're interested, then in further videos we will compare the American Fluke 8020 and its direct Soviet competitor or a copy, I mean the electronic MMT-01. Now I say goodbye, until we meet again, with you as always, Waskasyan TV.